Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. We're gonna give a couple of minutes, three minutes to be exact, just to get sure that everyone is connected uh, on their laptops or tablets and we can proceed to this webinar, okay? Muchachos, bienvenidos, bienvenidos a este webinar de, eh, para compartir una experiencia por parte de Julien Barbier en lo que es ser un empresario, un entrepreneur en Silicon Valley. Eh, vamos a empezar en dos minutos este, para dar eh, oportunidad a que todos se estén conectando desde sus laptops, desde sus tablets. Este, en dos minutos comenzamos. Así es que agarren un buen asiento, muchachos, tomen notas. Y vayan ahí, este, recuerden que pueden estarnos escribiendo en la sección de eh, preguntas y respuestas o Q&A. Eh, cualquier duda que tengan, el equipo de Holberton va a estar apoyándoles para responderlas. Muy bien, no, importa, eh, no es necesario ponerlas en, en, en inglés, pueden escribirlas en español si gustan y nosotros vamos a estar haciendo la traducción de ser necesario. Okay, Julian, we are giving them one more minute to connect. The, uh, I am explaining to them the, the dynamics that we're going to follow. Um, uh, in one minute, we're going to start, okay? Yep. Excellent. Muchachos, nuevamente gracias para los que se están conectando. Un gustazo tenerlos por aquí y gracias por la puntualidad que están teniendo. Vamos a dar un minuto más. Vemos que se están conectando algunos este, todavía a la sesión. En un minuto más comenzamos para, y ya tenemos aquí a todo el equipo de Holberton para darles este webinar. Espero que estén tan emocionados como yo. Ok, muy bien, son las seis con tres, entonces respetando el tiempo de, de los panelistas, vamos a comenzar en este momento, eh, recuerden, esta es una sesión en inglés, entonces voy a comenzar a, a, a dar la palabra en inglés, recuerden que todas sus dudas, es, ustedes pueden escribirlas en español y posteriormente también podríamos estar utilizando el traductor eh, de los de distintos medios para que hagan la traducción en caso de que alguno de ustedes tenga alguna duda, muy bien. Okay, we're going to proceed. Julien, thank you for your time. Uh, and well, hi everyone. Welcome to this webinar, First Steps Like an Entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. My name is Ricardo Best, Academic Director at Holberton Campus Merida. And I have the pleasure, if not the honor, to present you Julian Barbier. Julian Barbier is the CEO and founder of Holberton School. And under his curriculum, he was head of growth and marketing and community at Docker and a co-founder of several companies uh, from which he will tell us more under this webinar. Uh, he will share with us some insights on the path to become an entrepreneur and his experiences at Silicon Valley. Julian, thank you for coming. Uh, Helitris, thank you. Uh, and well, uh, I don't know if you can share with us these experiences that you have gained over, over the time. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a really, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so like a few, a few more words about my background so that you can, uh, you know, adjust your questions and, you know, ask anything you want afterwards. Um, so I was born and raised in, uh, in France, actually, uh, first, and then I did all my studies over there. Um, I didn't know what to do, really. And so I started with biotechnology and then biochemistry. And suddenly I stumbled upon uh, computer science. And um, I really loved it. I went to a school, I did five years of computer science, and then I got a job that really changed my life. Uh, I, I didn't come from you know, a family uh, which had a lot of money, uh, but suddenly I was making more money than you know, anyone in my family before, uh, just because you know, I had access to this new type of, uh, to this new type of jobs. 
And then, you know, like it kind of planted a seed in my head saying, you know, wait, maybe one day, uh, you know, I can give that back, that chance back to more people than just me. Um, and that just the regular people who can go, uh, you know, get this type of education. And then I moved forward, you know, I was a software engineer and then I, I joined a lot of startups, uh, mainly in France first. And uh, I become a product manager and I become a, you know, international project manager. You know, I was really interested in everything. Uh, and then at one point, you know, we created a first company with my, uh, uh, with the person I was uh, sharing an apartment with because we didn't have that much money. Um, so we were sharing uh, an apartment with a friend uh, in Paris and we created our first company. And actually, we created the first company because we had to, not because we wanted to, because the project was to create a forum for everybody to tell about their experience in different companies. That was my first company. And, and then we got a lot of companies suing us for that. And then we went to a lawyer and said, oh, you're crazy. You don't have a company to protect yourself. You have to create a company to protect yourself. And that's how I created my first company. It didn't go very well. I was totally inexperienced, <laughs> but I learned a ton of things. And uh, moving forward, I went on creating another company, which was an e-commerce company. Um, long story short, we didn't find the market fit until months after we created it that. And we found this in uh, very hard to sell products that we were you know, selling online. This was before Amazon was very big. And, and, you know, it, it scaled very, very fast. And at one point we said, okay, now we want to address, you know, the US market and the Latin American market. So where do we go? Miami. So I move everybody to Miami and then we, we uh, you know, we start there. And then a few months later, we got acquired. We got a big offer from, I mean, big, not as in the TechCrunch article in millions, but big for, you know, where I come from. And, you know, it was a six figure offer and, you know, we split it that with my co-founder, uh, paid tax. And at the end of the day, we didn't have much, but it was a lot of money at the time for us. Um, and then, you know, as a software engineer, one of my dream was to go to Silicon Valley. So, uh, you know, I just took a plane ticket and then went there with some friends to visit uh, because, you know, I just sold my company. So, you know, I had a little bit of time, a little bit of money. So I could just like spend some time going to Silicon Valley and there, like it was like a completely new world for me. You know, everybody was super open. Everybody was thinking like big ideas. And like, I, you know, I thought I, I knew so much. And then I, I come to Silicon Valley and I realized I know nothing. I'm so, you know, I, I still have so much to learn. And then I stumbled upon a friend. Uh, he was running a company called Dot Cloud at the time. And said, look, like we need someone like you in the team. Like you understand engineering, you understand marketing, you understand business. It's very hard to find, you know, all those uh, skill set into one person. It's like, why don't you join us and, you know, like to, to help me like build my company. He had just raised, a, raised a, I think it was a $10 million round, uh, which at the time was big, uh, very, very big uh, for a Series A. And then we go there and uh, we, with my wife, we move. Over there at the time we didn't have any kids it was that was easy and um and then i, I you know i i stopped my career as a as a, an entrepreneur but like become a uh i just like take the head of the the marketing the community the growth of the, over there and then we pivoted the company you know like three months after i joined uh to a company called docker uh and then a third of the team zero budget and i had to like scale that to infinity and beyond and we did a pretty good job because like we scaled the company from zero to $1 billion valuation in less than three years. I was insane. I learned so many things in that short amount of, of time. And uh, I was very lucky to, uh, to be in this environment and, and to have the opportunity to you know, be in this, this company. And, um, and then at the same time, I told my friend, like, I, you know, I just wanted to help a little bit and then, you know, move on with creating my own company. And then, you know, after three years, the company was still exponentially, uh, you know, growing. And I said, look, like either I settle and uh, I do this for the rest of my life or, um, you know, I have to create another company. And, and one of my big, um, you know, belief is that we could do something for so many people in education. And that has been like, you know, uh, um, something that I was very deeply uh, connected with. And so at one point I said to my friend, look, you know, I, I, I need my freedom back. 
and I want, I, I really want to like try something, right? And then like in the United States, like, you know, like we have, I have seen like many problems in France and I, and I knew like education was, had to be disrupted, but in the United States, there was like also like even more uh, disruption to be, um, to be done. Um, the, the student debt is 1.3, 1.5 trillion dollars now. Um, you know, like no one can access like the real quality education. It's really, really like for like the top 1%. And, um, you know, I find this, you know, not fair. Maybe it's because I'm French and there like everything's free in terms of education. Uh, maybe it's, you know, it's my DNA. I, I, I don't know, but we wanted to do something. And so with my co-founders, we started this company called Whole Button. And the idea from the beginning was we're going to start with one school in SF that we're going to run, but eventually what we want to build is, you know, an education with um, an education that works in San Francisco, but we can also expand everywhere so that everybody in the world with the will to study uh, and work a little bit, um, you know, could have access uh, to. And so we, we started with Holberton, like the first uh, cohort was in 2016, like most of our students found, found jobs like after nine months in, you know, like all the big companies in, in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, and I remember, you know, like when we were, when we were uh, pitching that we were saying like, we want to build the next Harvard, but for everybody. And like people from Harvard, like were, were telling me like, that's not possible. Like people from Stanford tell, telling me it's not possible in that amount of time, no way. But if you look at, you know, our students who find like full-time jobs, you know, their average salary is higher than the one who, you know, spent four years at uh, Stanford as a bad, with, with a bachelor degree. So to me, this is one of the proof that this is working. And um, we had like lots of different um, ideas. And eventually what, what happened is that, you know, like the world noticed, we got like a few articles, people learned about us. Uh, and then like they came to us asking us, hey, can, can we use, you know, your pedagogy? Can we use your software? Can we use your ideas to replicate that into other geographies? And that's, you know, what we started in, in January 2019 uh, in Latin America and with another school also in, in, um, in the US. And that's what we've been uh, doing since then. And, uh, you know, like, I don't, I don't even know the number of students we have helped so far, but I think, you know, it's, and Eliatri is on the call, so maybe you can you can help. But I think it's more than three thousand people who are benefiting now from our education and technology around the world. And we are in twenty five different countries right now. Um, that's and we were pretty happy about it. So my dream of like having an impact on education is becoming true. I think there's like plenty of uh, room to grow, um, but uh, you know we are just like working on that with, with the team. Wow, excellent. Uh, Julian, uh, it's, it's a lot. Uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, you're basically a pioneer on all this uh, technology and making disruption on the education, which to be honest here in America is going to be pretty cool because you're right. Uh, the education needs to be for everyone. Uh, one question, uh, Julian, uh, regarding the uh, on the part of the entrepreneur, uh, mo uh, several of our students and uh, the people that is connected right now is uh, they they wonder how can they make that big decision to be or not to be an entrepreneur on your experience. Yeah, well, I think you know, like the. I think the first thing to say, like, is that, you know, any advice anyone can tell you is, is going to be, it might be not applying to you. Like, there's no one straight answer to that. Uh, but that being said, um, you know, like, what, what's important is, you know, the feeling you have when you wake up and, you know, like, are you frustrating where you are because, like, you know, you have an idea and, and nobody's willing to work on it? Are you frustrating about, you know, like a problem that you see every single day, maybe not at work, but, you know, during, you know, like throughout your life and you want to tackle that because nobody wants to do that. Um, are you excited about, you know, an opportunity that you can see coming with all those new technologies, you know, like it, and it can be in tech and can be like in anything. Uh, that's, you know, one thing to, you know, one, one way to think about it. That's, you know, mostly like the kind of the Silicon Valley way, right? But there's other types of entrepreneurship too, right? Like you can just like build uh, something that is not growing super fast, not in a super big market, 
uh, and it could be a restaurant, right? Uh, and that's also entrepreneurship. So there's like different levels and different uh, conditions and different contexts. And the most important thing is to really want it and to feel that there's no way around it because otherwise you're not gonna, you're not gonna feel happy and you're not gonna be able to sleep at night. And when you get this you know, gut feeling, it's probably one good indicator uh, that you should try something, right? And when you are at this level, I think the most important is to try and it doesn't matter if you fail because if you don't try, then you actually, 100% you're gonna fail, right? And, and you might regret it you know, uh, later. Um, it's not for everyone though, it's, it's very hard. Uh, you know, like when I say things like this, you know, with my presentation, I'm not going to spend time like on the boring things where, uh, you know, like it was not fun and we had like so many problems. Uh, but in all my companies, uh, whether I was an employee or the entrepreneur, we were like close to closing the company several times. So, for instance, with my e-commerce company, um, what we did was we were looking at um you know, like the, the long tail of products, right? Something you will not see uh, when you're going to go shopping in the big mall, right? So you're not going to see that in Walgreens. Uh, you're not going to see that in Carrefour. In, in, you know, you're not going to see that, you know, in, in physical stores because like this is just like the, the, the long tail and it's, it doesn't make any sense for them to be selling those items. And so we were specializing very hard to find products so that like people would look at them online uh, looks for them online, sorry. And then, you know, we would, they would go on Google and then we would buy the AdWords. And then one day AdWords said, um, sorry, but we don't like what you sell. It was about, uh, it was a pen that I was selling uh, with a pinhole camera. And uh, they said, no, this is spying stuff. So now you're blacklisted. Uh, there's no way around that. Your company is not no longer being able to do that. And so like from uh, like overnight, we basically made like zero revenue. <laughs> a little bit of SEO, but that, that's it, right? And so like, what are you doing in, in that case? And you have to really like think about, you're going to have like so many days like those. And, uh, and I have like so many stories. We don't have the time to go through all of them, but I have so many stories like that. What do you do? And then I, I was calling like Google AdWords in the US and then they were telling me like, stop calling us. And then they black blacklisted my number. I could not even call them anymore. And, and the answer was either you stop or you find another way. And but there was no way, officially there was no way, right? And so what we did is that we, I called friends, Google AdWords in France. And I said, look, I think, you know, uh, there's a problem with my translation because I don't speak English very well. And I think they misinterpreted something. In the meantime, I removed the, pinhole, uh, you know, like pen, you know, uh, spying stuff from the website. I think there was a misunderstanding, like what, what's happening, right? And I said, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Because like, they're not really speaking with each other. And they said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna transfer you to Ireland because I don't speak English either. And then I, I talked to the guys in Ireland, uh, Ireland, and then they unlocked my account. And it took me, it took us, I was with my co-founder at the time and it took us three weeks of like pure stress three weeks where, you know, like we had to pay the employees, we had to pay the suppliers, we stopped paying ourselves because we couldn't afford it anymore. And, you know, maybe it would not have worked, but for sure, if you have done it yourself, then it would be that, it would have been, you know, like over. So this is a very hard um, path, very, very hard. And like everything you hear uh, in the media is only like, you know, like the, the stars and like everything went well and like I had a vision and then like suddenly it happened. No, it's, it's not like this. And every company you can think of was, you know, like that close to, to, um, to close like several times, Apple, Microsoft, Face, everybody. Wow. That's here in the other side of the coin. At this moment, <laughs> that's pretty insightful, to be honest. Uh, I I have always wondered why on the movies everyone got a success at the first uh, try they do, and as you said, obviously it's not that uh, it's something on a uh, sketch it for the movie, but on the real yeah. life, as we can see, you have to try and try and try again until you find a way out, right? Exactly, and and. 
One of the things that we're trying to really push inside the education at Holberton is exactly that, like the culture of entrepreneurship, uh, because we throw at students problem sets without giving them the answer or the tools, like find it by yourself. If you're able to do that, you're going to be a great software engineer, but moreover, you're always going to find a way out or a solution to whatever you know is thrown at you during your life. It's very, very important. Um, and, and going back to your um, to what you were saying, like there are many, many successful entrepreneurs who started their career by being, um, you know, entrepreneurs that failed. And like, if you look at Steve Jobs, you know, like if you look at like so many of them, they started like so many companies that failed. And one of the cool thing is that people only remember the successes, right? right. And sometimes we like. Sometimes, you know, I, I talk to entrepreneurs and they say, oh, like, but what will people think about me if I fail? They won't care. Just start something else and then, like, they're going to focus on your success. Nobody cares. And so, like, what you really want to do if you, if you think you want to start something is have an idea, of course, and, and you know, like, and then you're going to probably going to have to build a team and, like, a proof of concept and think about what are the tools that, you know, are at your disposal to do that. But really, like it's it's going to be a fight uh, against yourself, against your mindset, and you're gonna have to grow this mindset to be able to grow your company, because uh, like there's nothing that can prepare you to that. Maybe hold button a little bit, but honestly, like I, you know, there's there's no you don't know what's gonna be thrown at you. I didn't know that you know at one point Google AdWords would say, oh no, like we changed, we changed the you know like our mind mind, and then now you're not allowed to sell those things anymore. How could I know? No, like, I couldn't know that, right? And then at one point it was PayPal. You know, PayPal was saying, oh, you're growing too fast. It must be a scam. What? <laughs> <laughs> and there's no discussion about this before? No. So they were like, still like, you know, clients were able to pay, but I was not able to retrieve my money from PayPal for a month. And for a month, wow. same thing. I had to like, you know, I like talked to my suppliers and, and I was good because I was in a good relationship with them. Uh, but they could just have said, no, we, we won't ship anything until, you know, you pay us. And then like, same thing, like for two months, we didn't pay ourselves. <laughs> and I was like, really, really tough, really, really tough because I was in a new country. And a few months after I do that, I have like no revenue, no help. And I just like, my, my bank account was negative and I have to like focus on finding a solution. Whatever happens, I need to find a solution. And, and you know, we managed to do that. Wow. Well, at this point, I, I have observed three major points that uh, you have placed inside Holberton, a magic recipe if you want, or a special recipe, being resilient from what I hear is part, you have to be extremely resilient to this world, the changing, the changes that we are observing right now, the technology, the loss, yeah. everything is going to be changing. And perhaps something that gives you success today is not going to be the same tomorrow for perhaps just a, a misunderstanding something like that right yeah. Yeah. and to... also uh, thinking out of the box julian from hearing of all your experiences is not only the knowledge that you gain over the time uh, well obviously you have to have all the tools and all the knowledge to know how and where to approach to solve a problem but also to to think out of the uh, of the box to to define not only okay th this is how the rules uh, indicate me these are the instructions I have to wonder how to resolve things prior uh, before they eat me alive right yeah no exactly yeah and it's it's the experience like really um, is really like a, a big asset to you as long as you learn from it. And I think you need to learn it at the, at the right level. It's not about when you become an entrepreneur, it's not about, you know, like being like super specialized into one layer, but it's really about the, like the layer above. I don't know everything. How do I get to know that? Or how do I get um, the solution? How do I get the tools? And it's, you know, it's just as, you know, just the same thing as, you know, everybody does at Holberton. It's like, I'm going to, you know, search for answers. I'm going to read books. I'm going to reach out to people, but I don't know. And like most of them are not going to answer me. It doesn't matter. But at one point, like I'm going to get to, you know, like to know some people who are going to answer me. And then, you know, there are the specialists in something I don't know. And they're going to learn the basics from them. And then once I have a little bit of money, then I can invest into the team. But I know how to recruit them because I speak their language. 
right? But I'm never going to be like the best sales guy in the world. Yeah, like, you know, people like much better than me. I'm never going to be like the best, uh, you know, software engineer in the world. There are like people better than me. Um, and, you know, just have to assume that. So you, so it's, it's not the question about being like very good at everything. It's not possible. It's the question about like, you really want to understand who you are. What are your strengths? And what do you need that you can't right. do by yourself? And then from there, um, don't try to be someone else. Don't try to be Steve Jobs. Don't try to be Elon Musk. You have to be yourself. You have to be like, okay, with being yourself. And then complement who you are and, and your skill set with other people. With other, maybe it can be advisors. It can be employees. It can be books that you're going to read. It can be, you know, Google. Um, but, you know, like this mindset of like going and finding the solution no matter what, and there is no other way around, that's what you need as a mindset. Like the, this is the most important thing as an entrepreneur. I think it's, it's your mindset. And this is your, you know, most valuable skills. This is the most valuable tool. Um, and if you have the mindset, you, it's, it's very hard to, to, um, to fail. Very, very hard. Right. Totally agree, uh, Julian. One question regarding this part. Um, okay, we have talked about how, uh, your experience as entrepreneur, uh, all the history, how we have to be resilient, how to uh, we have to think out of the box. But uh, let's focus on the part of the technology. You have gathered a lot of experience on that side. Uh, you, you have been in the in the industry with a lot of partners. Mm. What's a, a, in your experience, what's the best language that we can use to begin with uh, um, in, in order to, to succeed? I know there's several languages, but on your experience uh, oh. here, uh, they, they want to know wh which language do you recommend, uh, which technologies do you recommend to begin to use with to start? So, I mean, I mean again, like there's no straightforward <laughs> answer. There's no one language uh, to rule them all. So it really depends on your context. Right. So do you want to, do you have to build a piece of software that goes super, super fast and, uh, you know, you don't need, you have to uh, do it on a, you know, very limited amount of memory and things like that. And maybe like a low level, um, low level, like C language is going to be like the right one. So, uh, you know, like C, C++ is, is not something very sexy today, but at the same time, the test like ours like you know they build with c and c plus plus right um if you want to if your if your focus is you know uh, a service that you're going to be you know offering on the web you might want to build like a platform that i don't know like, aggregates like a lot of people and and you know like a marketplace maybe um and then you also have to go fast because like the go-to market is more important actually that you know, the language itself, the go to market is the most important in this context, you know, what are you going to use? And so you're going to use uh, frameworks on top of languages that, you know, are very easy um, to build. So like, you're not going to build like your website in C and C++, right? Um, I can't even think of a, of, of an, you know, of a, of a specific um, language, right? Yeah, but like, it could be like, so, Anyway, it could be JavaScript, it could be Python for the backend. If you are in uh, artificial intelligence, you know, Python or all the languages today it might change tomorrow. But like, there's, there's no answer to that. It's, it's really like, what's the context? Um, do you need to be like something fast, solid, go to market as soon as possible? Um, and, and then you're going to have your, uh, your answer. If you want to build like um, a company that builds you know, uh, WordPress plugins is going to have to be PHP, right? And so like, it's really diff. like, there's so many, you know, examples. If you give me an example, maybe I can, you know, I can talk to you about like which language makes more sense, but it's really about the context. And again, like, if I didn't know about, you know, what language to, um, to use for this context and for this purpose, I would just look at the competitors. And I would just talk to employees over there and people who left the companies over there to learn about, okay, what did you use? What are the pros and cons? Because now you have the experience running this, uh, you know, piece of software. And maybe you know that if you had to restart, then you would use something else. And then you, you go in and, you know, get this uh, data 
from the world uh, you know outside and then you gather everything and then you decide with everything you you gathered excellent so uh, if i understand you correctly it depends totally on the result on on what on the goal that you want to achieve yeah. if you want to work for some major company perhaps you have to go on and check which languages they are using right now yeah. so you can master them and if you want yes. to be the entrepreneur uh, an entrepreneur to that builds the next uh, hit on the industry, you will have to wonder first, what are you going to sell? What are you going to build to decide yeah. which language is the best? And I have observed that under Holberton curriculum, it, it, the focus is more on acquiring the logic, acquiring the, the, the understanding behind the, the, the code, as so, some of the students say, uh, becoming me, all right, uh, seeing the code, behind the code to understand uh, what is happening, because once that you have that logic, you can uh, learn different languages on a short amount of time, right? Yes, correct. So, so there's two things. So there's the, the mindset that we focus, like we're really focusing on, like the learning how to learn mindset of Holberton. And then this is also a software engineering school, right? So we have to, we decided to give the, you know, like a broad basics understanding of like every layer of a system, how everything works. So that once you have those basics in computer science, not development, computer science, right? Plus the mindset of an entrepreneur slash engineer, then you can learn whatever you need to learn to get to your goal. So if tomorrow you want to, you know, you want to work at this company and, you know, we, we don't cover Go, at, for instance, at, at Holberton, right? But we cover like Python and JavaScript and C, right? And then for the most advanced students, we have like um, assembly and, and other types of languages. Um, but let's, let's say you want to work at Docker, right? They're using Go. Does that mean you can't go there? No, you can go there because you have all the tools to learn very fast to get to le the level that you need to pass the interview over there, right? And if you if right. you look at other types of education, because you don't have the mindset, then you're not going to be able to do that. Or because you have maybe you have the mindset, but you don't have like the CS background, and then you're not going to go as fast. So the combination of both things make you know our students very resilient to change and very adaptable which is one of the first thing employers are telling us back. So like, okay, uh, compared to, you know, like a university, like a four-year university, like the algorithm level is not as high, but this is incredible how fast they learn. This is incredible how fast they integrate a team and work together, right? And that's the first feedback that we get. And that's the goal. The goal is for our students to not, um, to, uh, to be able to do whatever they want without the school as soon as possible. The school is a tool. It's not something that you would you should need for as long as possible. We're not here to tell you, hey, like stay five years. We're here to like help you jump towards your goal. This is the tool. This is the methodology. Once you get that, and then once you understand that, you're ready to get on a job. Right, and and not only that. Uh, uh, if I'm correct, and correct me here, Julian, you also learn how to observe the rest of the cohort, the rest of the generation of your mates as friends, as associates that can help you over not only inside of Colberton, but also outside. That's the way on Silicon Valley, right? You, you can help the others, and at the same time, you, you can gain success by that. Yeah, so it's not... It's not just Silicon Valley, it's like in every company, uh, you're going to have to work as a team, right? It, it doesn't matter if, you know, uh, you're very good. As long as you can't work as a team, you're not going to be valuable to the company, right? And that's one of the big issues with education today. The education today is, oh, you, you're at an exam, you, you're not allowed to speak with your uh, peer next to you, right? This is like cheating. But like in, in real life, this is the, the total other way around. Like if someone tells me, uh, oh, I don't know about this. Like, did you ask your peer? Did you ask your coworker? No, so you didn't do your job, right? So like it's the total opposite. So we try to replicate as much as possible what people are going to need, the attitude people are going to need, the mindset people are going to need once, you know, they get on a job. Um, and that's, you know, like that's very important. And the fact that, you know, you, you have to communicate online and like on site, you know, hopefully like COVID is going to uh, disappear as soon as possible. Um, 
then it, it forces us to, it forces like the, the students to like try to adapt to like the person they have in front of them. Sometimes, you know, they get paired with students, with other students who would, who would do nothing, right? But, you know, it's not fair, but life is not fair. And you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to feel that also, you're going to face that in also in your workplace. So we try to replicate as much as possible the, the, the hard life that they're going to see after. And like the goal is to make Hobart a much harder than their first job. And so we got some students who are saying, oh, I'm on vacation now because, you know, I, 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 I know I left Holberton. I found a job. This is so easy now, right? Even though that's, I, you know, it's it's not that easy because you have like to learn like so many things, you know, like to get to know people and there's the pressure of the first job, right? It's not like at school, like if you fail, you fail, you live another day. If you fail, like the, the deadline, maybe you are fired. Um, so there's like another type of, you know, like pressure. Um, but, you know, like the more you train, it's like, you know, a boxer, the more you train, the more likely you're going to be happy for the fight and the fight is one when you train not you know when you fight totally agree julian here we have a couple of questions um regarding on the uh, uh, on the employers i know we have opened uh, more than 20 uh, uh, campus uh, worldwide uh, What's the experience, the the response that you uh, that, that you have observed from the employers of uh, Holberton Halbney? Yeah, so if you look at the the first stats that we got from the first schools we've opened, um, you know, like in, in Latin America, that was uh, Colombia, and okay. if you look at the first stat that Andres and Hernando, who are the leaders over there, have put together, like students find jobs that are paid like I think fifty percent more than the best universities in the country. Wow. Right. Um, the first batch of students in Tunisia also like uh, was, I think, you know, they, they celebrated the last day, I think a few weeks ago, everybody found a job and they found a job not only in Tunisia, but also in other countries. And for instance, they found, uh, they found uh, jobs at uh, the bank Satender, um, you know, in Spain, uh, who came specifically to get those students. Right. Um, wow. And so... I think here we have to prove that this is working everywhere. And, uh, you know, as long as people are willing to put the effort, again, like Hoboton is not for everybody. If you think that this is going to be easy, it's probably not the right school for you. Um, but as long as you're willing to put the effort, there is no reason why uh, you can't find a job after Hoboton, honestly. Excellent. Thank you. And well, uh, on this same path, uh, what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence? Uh, do you see a field in the near future on the market, on the industry inside Holberton? Yeah, so we have a, we have a specialization um, for AI. Uh, I think, you know, AI, if I were a student today, I would probably try AI if I like math. If you don't like mathematics, don't, don't try AI because there's a lot of mathematics. Again, like we do the same, the same way we, um, you know, we teach the first year, we do the same for AI. So you got to find, you know, courses online where you, you don't have to do mathematics and you feel that you understand AI because you have to click here and there. And then, you know, like you finish the exercise. It's not like that at whole button, you know, like you're going to need to understand how everything works underneath before learning Python, you learn C so that you can build stuff on C Python too, right? And it's the same right. way we have articulated the AI, um, you know, curriculum. So it's it's the by far the toughest, uh, but probably the most rewarded if you like mathematics. Again, if you like mathematics. But I mean, if you look at you know where the world is going today, there are like a few uh, sectors that you know for the next twenty years are going to lead, um, you know, disruption. And that's AI, that's crypto, that's uh, biotechnology, uh, that's spatial. Uh, and a few others. So, you know, I, I would be a student. I would either go with AI or like something else, but within the industry of, you know, that I just, uh, you know, mentioned, because, uh, you know, this is really the future and, and it's happening right now. If you are able to um, to place in one of those companies, in one of those fields, then you're going to start an experience um, and, and you're going to learn so many things that are going to be exponentially, you know, valuable as, as you know, you move forward within uh, your career. 
Okay, right. And as you said, it's not only learning the code, learning the library or the framework that you're going to use. It's also understanding that if that needs you to understand mathematics, statistics, or something else, you will have to acquire that under the uh, curriculum of, of that program, right? Yeah, you have to. Yeah, there's no way around that. At least in our, at least in our curriculum. So there's ways around that if you want to do other stuff. Uh, at a level that is a little bit different, uh, but you know you can find like other resources with you know other providers if you if you prefer. Right. Yeah. Because right now, as we have talked over this webinar, the idea here is that you gain all the experience that you have over six, 10, 20 years, and you have to acquire that information in short amount of time. So yeah. it's not gonna be an easy uh, test, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question, Julian. Uh, I, I, I see that the people is eager to, to know uh, more about the, your insight on the industry. Julian, what's the next step on Holberston Hall uh, and in your entrepreneurial life? Okay, this is <laughs> it's gonna be tough. So yeah, you know, like uh, your next step as an entrepreneur, it's like, it's like the stock market. You, nobody can really predict what's going to happen. So I, I guess we'll see what, what's coming in. Uh, but for Holberton, like, there's like more development uh, in progress. And, and we have like uh, two goals. Like the, the first one is, you know, like making sure the students get like, you know, um, the, the right uh, education, the best education as possible. And so, you know, we have like, for instance, one of the things that we develop consistently is the checker, right? And so a lot of students give us feedback and then we adapt it. And then, you know, like new students give us feedback and then we adapt it again. And then the cool thing about that is that the more students we have at Holberton, the better the program becomes. And then because of that, we have more students at Holberton and then better the programs become, et cetera. Uh, in terms of curriculum, I've, the, the team right now is working on uh, mobile. Um, and I'm gonna let the team reveal exactly which technology we're gonna use, but it's pretty exciting. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, we're also here to help, you know, our partners managing the school as much as, as you know, as best as possible. So we're also building software so that, um, you know, our partners can really run the school as smoothly as possible. Uh, every country has different uh, specifics that we try to solve for them. So we have like those two aspects that we're working on at the same time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, well. We have talked about uh, your life, your experiences on entrepreneurship. Um, it, there's one question uh, that keeps bossing here, and it's um, how to uh, how to keep a business through innovation. Because we have talked uh, about learning the things, but on your experience, on, on, on yeah, basically on your experience, what uh, what we have to do to keep a business through innovation. Yeah, so, so if, so again, there's different types of businesses and you don't really, you don't have to run a business that is hyper innovative, right? In the long run, though, if you don't adapt a little bit, a minimum, then it's going to be tough. So I think, you know, like once you are running a company, you know, one of your job as a CEO is to make sure that you look at everything's happening, you know, everywhere. Um, and and you don't want to wait for the disruption to happen. You want to position your company so that when you see a wave coming in, then you position your company right at the beginning of the wave um, so that then you can embrace the wave and not be completely destroyed by it when it goes down, right? And so, you know, for, like there's like a very good example of that. So for instance, you know, restaurants, like for a long time, they thought that they didn't have to adapt, right? So some of them started, you know, they, they, you know, they were working with, you know, uh, uh, software providers and then, you know, you can like start booking online, but like most of them, not really, you know, and then COVID happened. And then we saw two different types of entrepreneurs here. There were the restaurants who right away overnight decided that, hey, we're going to fight this. We're not going to close. We're going to make deliveries. I don't know how to do that, but I find a way. They hired people or they found other companies for doing that for them, and then they survived. And then there were the other ones. Oh, we're going to wait for this to stop. Uh, for now, we're going to stop, and, and you know, we're going to take the PPP from the US. And, and like, you know, every country had a program to help them, financially speaking, and then they're all, they're all dying right now. And that's you know, a good 
I think it's a good illustration of uh, there's no way around there's no way around it long term. You can't you know not innovate for a long time uh, if you're not in a very disruptive you know uh, field. Uh, but like restaurants, like they thought they didn't have to do anything, and then suddenly COVID happened, and and they were not prepared, and um, and and we clearly saw the different mindsets of the owners. That's what yeah. saved like, those restaurants. It's the mindset of the owner. And that's the best the best example that we can observe right now, right? Uh, in one year, we have seen that uh, that much change. Uh, okay, let, let me remind you guys, uh, you can share and ask questions uh, over the question and answer uh, section, and we will gladly share it with, with Julianne. Uh, Julianne, uh, here we have, uh, can I apply at my 54 years old, and I am a technical support engineer. Is there a, a, an age uh, to change or, or to assist to Halberton? So this really depends on, uh, so like, is there an age to become a software engineer? No. There's no, there's no age. So we had, um, I have like, you know, I had like one student, I think he was 51, who spent nine months at Holberton, found a job at a publicly listed company, who was very successful, making a ton of money, uh, wow. more than me. And um, I think, you know, that, that speaks for itself. And it's the same that goes because this is like, this is supposed to be a, about entrepreneurship. The same thing goes for entrepreneurs. There is like if you want to make it happen, you can, and there's no age. And like the magazines are telling you, hey, like there's like this crazy like very young software engineer uh, who started coding at 12. I don't care. I started coding. I was like 16, and that's fine. And I and I see people starting coding at 30, and they're fine. It's not a race. It doesn't matter if it started at 12. I don't care. And then same thing for the entrepreneurship. You know, like um, Liz is telling me like, yes, you know, you can do this if, if you really want it, no matter the age. If you, same thing, if you, if you look at the media, they're always going to put, you know, first they're going to put a white man there. Well, like there's like plenty of like female entrepreneurs who are like super successful, right? And they're not all white. And, and also like most of the time it's like, oh, like, Everybody's under the impression that, you know, like in tech, you have to be young. That's not true. If you look at the stats, the most uh, successful, like the most successful entrepreneurs in terms of age, the best age to start a company. Yeah, that I said it well, is around 40 years old. Why? Because you have the experience. You know what you want. Because like when I'm 12, I don't know what I want. When I'm 18, I, I don't think I, want, I knew what I wanted at 18 too. Uh, I was not very mature. Uh, but you know, like, and but like at 40, at 50, you know, and like if you look at you know, like a lot of different entrepreneurs, like big uh names that you, you can think of, Google them today, you know, after this, and you're gonna see like some people were 60, some people were 50, some people were 30, 40. At every age, there's no rule. This is like as long as you have the mindset and the energy, you can do it. And with with the caveat that it's going to be harder for some people than others. And that's, that's for sure. It's going to be harder if you don't have any money, any savings. It's going to be harder if you're a woman. It's going to be harder if you're Black. That's, you know, a given. But it shouldn't uh, prevent you from moving forward and, you know, get a better life for yourself and your family, right? And the goal is not to be, like, as successful as Jeff Bezos. There's only one Jeff Bezos, and it's fine. You know, it's not a race to be like, you know, in the front of Forbes. Nobody cares, really. You know, once you are in the front of Forbes, in the cover of Forbes, what do you do with that? You show it to your mother and then what? It doesn't change your life, right? So as long as you, you're happy with your success and define your success before you start, right? What's my success? What's my success metric, right? And you can always redefine it as you go, you know, forward. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's just as, you know, the same thing as the journey to become a software engineer at Hobart. And compare yourself not to the best students all the time because you're going to be depressed. Compare, to, compare yourself with yourself a week before. Are you better? Do you understand better the concepts? You know, did you learn something? Can you go faster on, on, you know, on the tracks if you're running? You know, like, and this is like true for everything in life. You have to compare yourself only to yourself. This is the only combat that you know you have to do and everything else you don't care you don't care to be like compared to jeff business everybody's going to tell you oh but you're not jeff business yeah 
Like those people, you don't listen to them, right? If you start, you know, you start running because you want to get into, um, you know, good health, everybody's going to look at you in the streets because you have like maybe you're a little bit fat or maybe you don't run fast. Yeah, but those guys, they don't run. So you, you have already won and they're jealous because they see you do that and they, you know, they don't do it, you know, themselves. And that's what you should focus on. Are you better than last time? You know, you're not going to run, you know, like the, you don't have to be the, the, the world champion at running as long as you progress. Same thing for software engineering, same thing for entrepreneurship. What's your goal? You know, one step at a time. And when you see a mountain, everybody can climb a mountain, but most people are going to say, oh, this is too high because like the task is so big, but it's just one step at a time. You know, the resilience, you're going to have to have it if you want to become a, a, an entrepreneur. And like one step at a time, at your pace, it doesn't matter, then you're going to get there. Mindset. It's, it's all about the mindset. Yeah, right. It seems to me that uh, that perhaps we have seen too much movies, too much, uh, yeah, too, too much movies, and we observe people that are at the pinnacle that he, they have succeed. And if you are presented with a story on two hours, it, obviously, if you try to compare yourself, you're gonna get depressed, right? But you're yeah. you're saying something really cool. You have to compare it to you and only to you. No, no, exactly. And and like, stop listening to all the bullshit of the media, the movies, the the like. Because, I mean, the problem today is that we live in a world where everybody wants everything right now and everybody's selling you this dream. You can, like, look at the books for software engineering. Learn C++ in seven days. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. So then what? You read the book and then you get depressed because you can't do it in seven days because, like, someone had written this on the cover of the book. No, right? And like, oh, everybody can become a software engineer. Everybody can become uh, an entrepreneur. Everybody can become a billionaire, like trading, like crypto. No, that's, that's not working. It's not true. Otherwise, everybody would be a millionaire. But everybody is selling you a dream that, you know, is, is, is not true. So like, take a step back and like develop your critical thinking. Don't listen to all this bullshit. Life is hard and it's going to be hard all your life and nothing's easy, and you're going to have to fight for everything you want in life. Whether it's a big thing, it's a small thing, whether you want to change a little bit or a lot, you have to fight. It's very hard. As long as you understand that, it's going to be fine. Wow. And if I understand you correctly, entrepreneurship now has a, a new whole meaning because it depends on what you what you want, how, how you measure and how you compare yourself to your, to your pre or self on one day or one week ago, right? It's not yeah. only on the on the amount of money on the millions that you want to generate. No, no, exactly. So there's like and same thing like the the success of a company. Some people are gonna say, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, like whole buttons a failure because you know, Julian, you're not a millionaire like yet after six years of work. Yeah, but like, have you made an impact like I did? And like they're gonna say, I don't care, and it's fine. You know, I win, they win, like everybody like, you know, like build their goals, like uh, as they as we go. And, and this depends on your mentality, your context, your history, like a lot of things, you know, are mixed into your goals. Uh, but just like focus on yourself and, and don't expect anything to be easy. Uh, but there are a lot of people are going to help you along the way. Um, and if if you're willing to have the positive mindset to ask for help. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, Kenny is asking, uh, companies nowadays are accepting people with big uh, curriculums. Elon Musk accepts people who are able to, to be creatives and solve problems. What is your opinion on that? Yeah, I think, I think he's right. I think, you know, what he's saying is that he doesn't care whether you're from Stanford or like you're, you just learn, you know, by yourself. And that's the new reality. Like now, nowadays, like there's so many different ways to uh, become, you know, proficient at, you know, software engineering or, and it's not just about software engineering, but yes, I think, I think he's right. I think, you know, like whole button is the proof of that, yeah, but, you know, I, I completely agree with, with what he's saying. And um, I think he doesn't really like the education, you know, um, uh, that, is, that is the way the education is, is provided today. And, you know, I tend to agree with that. And like, he also like created his own school. Excellent. Um, 
Well, an anonymous here. What if I didn't study a career related to IT? Can I apply to this? I love if I love maths. I took a Python course and I really enjoy it. So I think this is related to persons. Do we have to have a background on IT to no. access Halberton? No, I, I think you know if you love maths and you already like Python, you're almost there. <laughs> like you just need to take this step you know, forward, whether it's whole button or anything else. I don't, I don't care. Just move forward with you. If this is your dream and you picture yourself like working behind a computer for like 10 hours a day for the rest of your life, move on, let's do it. Right. And plus you're going to have probably a better, uh, a better salary. Um, so yeah, like you can do it. And I would, I would advise to do it. It's, it's one of the last job that is going to be disrupted by automation. And we have like 20, 30 years ahead of us. Thanks. And well, he, we have another one uh, on soft skills. Uh, when you started, uh, Julian, as an entrepreneur, did you have uh, trust issues uh, on the part of, uh, let's say, before, uh, when you form a team, were you mm. scared of sharing your ideas or that someone steal them? That's a, that's a great question because at the very beginning, I was really focusing on the idea and I didn't want to tell my idea to anyone. Because exactly that, Daniel, I, I was like afraid that somebody would steal it. And then again, I, would, I, I felt that. And then what happened is that I reached out to people who had more experience than me. And all of them told me it doesn't matter. Right. And they're, and they're right. And then like I, I followed their advice because I, I've, you know, I found that they had good points. And it's true. Like if you have this idea, first of all, probably someone else on earth has this idea as well. There's billions of people and you're probably not the first one to think about it. But there's like the first layer of uh, as, that act as a filter. Most of people who have ideas and most people have great ideas. Most people have multi-million dollar company ideas. Most of us. But only a few of us are willing to work hard to make this happen and make this a reality. So that's this first filter, right? And second... You know, if you're really motivated, you have the right mindset, there's nobody um, that is as qualified as you are to actually, you know, operate this business uh, under the mission or the idea that you have, right? And one of, one of the, you know, like one, one example I can give you is uh, at Docker, um, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a container technology, it's, it's very technical, so like, mo I guess most of the audience is not technical. So I'm not going to go into that, but I want, at one point we got a lot of traction, you know, everybody was talking about us. And so what happened that, you know, Google created their own Docker technology, right? And then everybody was like, oh, this is the end of the world. But no, it was not the end of the world because we were a small team. We were completely dedicated to that. And then at, at Google, they had a product manager with project managers, with PhDs, and with people who were working nine to five. And then to have like a budget, they had to go to their supervisors and wait for the politics to happen. And then, and so we were moving so fast because we were like focusing on this. We were like not going against Google. We were going against like a small team at Google with lots of politics and lots of problems uh, that they inherit from Google. They had the firepower, but they couldn't really go as fast as us. And I think this, this speaks to the, to the topic, like, once you are there, in any case, anybody can copy you. So you're just like, if you don't talk about your ideas to anyone, at one point, you're going to have to put it on the market and people will uh, notice, right? Um, that being said, there are like stories where I know entrepreneurs who you know, were approached by Facebook to understand how they did. Maybe they would buy them, they don't buy them, and then they copy everything. That happens too. So you have to... Again, like you have to understand the context. Uh, if this happens to you at, at any point, talk to people, right? And, you know, learn about their experience, learn about their failure before you do it by yourself, right? You don't have to do the same uh, failures if people have, have failed before. It just, you just have to find a person who failed so that he can share or she can share uh, the failure with you, with you. And then you learn from that. Again, like ask for help. You know, one of the core element of the whole button education. Excellent. Thank you, Julian. And right on time, 
it's been for me just like five minutes talking with you. I would like to have a more webinars of this if you agree. Uh, unfortunately, I know that we only have one hour for this one. Uh, we have some questions on how uh, where you can subscribe or uh, have access to Holberton. Uh, Nadia is placing uh, the URL on the chat comments. Uh, you can visit our website and subscribe. Uh, remember, you you can make the the test. Uh, it's uh, they, they are free and you will gain a lot of experience just by doing those tests and if you cover all of them you will be able to uh, perhaps to, to be part of the next cohort uh, julian thank you for your time uh, it's been really really uh, uh, I, I cannot find the words i i, I ha you have shared such a lot of wisdom on us with all the experiences that you have uh, shared and uh, I, I thank you for that I, I never thought that uh, someone that is on the top has to work so hard uh, to achieve. And not only that, but that it's a, a, that everyone is capable to do that, right? Yeah. Anybody so, with a lot of work, a little bit of per perseverance, actually a lot, uh, can, can do it. And it, it's not just about entrepreneurship. It's like everything that uh, you want to set uh, as a goal in your life. You know, it's, it's, it's possible as long as you have the positive mindset, uh, the work ethics, and, you know, you just apply everything you love at all, but then like ask for help, look for answers everywhere. You're going to find it. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Julian. Yes. And have a good night. I, I, it's, it's night on France, right? No, I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm in San Francisco right now. So uh, oh, excellent. that's where I live. Right. So it's, uh, it's 5 PM. Okay, excellent. Then thank you and good afternoon, Julian. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. Take care, everybody.